Welcome to the end of my work day once again, a work day that has been made very <laughs> exciting by NASA releasing this, the first image from the James Webb Space Telescope. Now it has been aligned and there's been a big update from NASA today. You can go watch like sort of the live stream that they did if you really want, <laughs> want to see it uh, from sort of the team that's behind this. But just to give you an update from sort of the astrophysicist perspective who are sort of, you know, is waiting to see the data from this telescope. Our Slack group just, you know, exploded this afternoon as we were going, oh my God, did you hear what they just said? Did you hear what they just said? So I wanted to give you a bit of a sort of inside info on how we're all reacting. So first of all, the alignment for the telescope uh, hexagonal mirrors is all done. So the alignment to to bring everything into focus. If you remember a month ago, like they released that image with sort of the 18 dots, each telescope mirror was seeing sort of the same star, but in a different location. Now they've brought them all together so that the telescope is nicely focused so that it can see incredible detail. So it's seen this star, which is a random star in the middle of this, a major constellation apparently, which is the Big Dipper or the Plow, as it's also known as as well. It's a hundred times fainter than the limit that you can actually see with the naked eye as well. So that gives you an idea of how faint this star is. You know, you should definitely get up this like proper image yourself online because it is incredible. That's how faint this star is, but you can see for Webb, like it, it collects so much light that it's so, so bright, right? And you have the hexagonal mirror shape, which means that you get this classic sort of like six pointed star shape pattern on the detector as well. But also you've got such a huge bleed because so much light has hit the detector that essentially it's bled into all of the neighboring pixels as well. What amazed us the most was that the team announced that like the performance of the optics was way just exceeded anything that they were really hoping for essentially so they actually announced like the resolution that they have been able to achieve after they focused it and so it's 70 milli arc sec 70 milli arc seconds resolution for those that that means something too so put it in units that maybe people are more familiar with it's 0 0.0000194 degrees resolution so if you think about the fact that the sky is 360 degrees round an object will you know subtend a certain amount of number of degrees so for example the full moon is half a degree across on the sky All right and so when you talk about resolution you're basically saying what is the smallest thing that your telescope will be able to make out on that 360 degree sky and so the smallest thing that James Webb can make out is 0 0.000194 degrees or 70 milli arc seconds an arc second being 1300 no 3600 of a degree um just to give you a little bit of context the Spitzer Space Telescope, which is, you know, another infrared space telescope like the James Webb, um, like its resolution, oh, I didn't write down the number, let's find out the number. I did the calculation before on my NumPy thing. Um, it's 0 0.00015 degrees, the Spitzer Space Telescope. So James Webb is 28 times better resolution than Spitzer, which was, you know, one of the previous infrared space telescopes we had. So we're all absolutely, just that number just made us all go, what? That's incredible. And what I love about this image as well is that obviously my team is a big galaxies group. We're not fussed about stars. We care about islands with stars elsewhere in the universe, right? And you can actually already see little galaxies in the background of this image as well that have been fully resolved. You can see incredible detail and shape in the background of that image as well. I wonder, can I flip the camera? I can flip the camera on a live. Oh, you learn something every day. But like, look, okay, so here's the star they were actually sort of like getting everything aligned and focused on. But like, look, this galaxy's in the background that you can already see like the shape of. Look at this one that they've put text over the top of. That looks a cool shape. And then you've got like even some like down here that are just like little bobs. You can still see like the fact that you've got like a, a central point that's much denser and then, you know, shape around it. Oh, I think my connection dropped. Can anybody see? Oh, I think my connection dropped. I think you're back though. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, the point is you can see loads of fun. Am I there? Am I here? My Wi-Fi is really struggling today. No. Oh, yeah, like you're saying you lost me. No, I am back, I promise. The lag is bad. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Radio, yeah, Wi-Fi, not great. Anyway, 
Um, we're back. The point is, the detail is incredible on these galaxies, and we're so, so excited about them. And what I loved as well is that they also released, um, like, you remember the selfie image that the mirrors took during, like, prior to the alignment phase, where it could essentially, like, use like a, almost like a pinhole camera to see the reflection that it was getting off the mirrors in the telescope. So it's actually released that image. So that was the image that we had last time and you could see the gaps where the light was getting in between gaps in all of the mirrors. And you could see sort of like essentially this section of the mirror was directing its light actually directly onto the detector. Well, now they've released like the updated version of that and it now looks like this. Essentially, all the segments of the mirrors are reflecting all of their light onto the detector. They're all aligned. You can't see sort of light spilling in between. You can just almost see the gaps in between them. It's just incredible to be able to see. The other thing that I did, because I got intrigued about this star, this image that it's taken and like this field and what it like looked like previously to us as well. And I actually found the same star in something called the Digitized Sky Survey, which was put together by the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. And you can sort of search for it on something called Aladdin, which is like a digitized sort of version that you can search by coordinates. And I searched for the coordinates and I actually found it. And so this is the same field of view. That is the same star in the center that James Webb has actually targeted here. And you can see like, if you compare them side by side, like the level of detail in this one compared to this one, like it's just ridiculous. Like it's unreal the level of detail it's getting. I know a lot of you've been asking on Twitter and stuff like, does this mean that the full alignment process is now finished and done? No, unfortunately it's not. This is the alignment process that's been done essentially on the main uh, imaging detector of James Webb. So it's called the, the NearCam detector. So if you remember from some of my previous videos, there's four main detectors on the James Webb Space Telescope. They've all got different jobs, different science goals, different ways of operating, whether it's imaging or whether you split the light through a prism and, and into all the component colors and wavelengths and take a spectra all different processes. So the alignment's only been done on NearCam, which is the main imaging detector on James Webb. The next couple of months are essentially gonna be tweaking that so you get the best response for all of the other detectors um, on board the craft. All of them have turned on and sort of like ping to say, hello, we're fine, we are working. Obviously it's just confirming also that those detectors are working as they should be, there's no issues. I was listening to some of the, like Jane Rigby, for example, who's um, part of the sort of team at NASA Goddard who runs this sort of stuff. She was saying, you know, all of the big, like the mission would be down the pan moments have, have gone, right? <laughs> you know, if anything goes wrong from here on in, it's sort of adjustments and how can we best cope with that and what can we do, you know, what tweaks can we make to still make it work, but at necessarily like lower performance than we might have expected originally. But as you can see, NearCam especially is getting incredible performance and I cannot wait to see the other calibration images they're gonna release over the next you know, couple of months or so. I think this is possibly gonna be the prettiest because obviously it's imaging, a sort of a spectral calibration probably won't look that exciting to, to many of the people outside of the astrophysics field, but we're probably all still gonna be drooling over it being, wow, look at the, res the, the wavelength resolution on this thing, you know, this vector resolution as opposed to the, the spatial resolution, you know, the detail it can resolve. So we're obviously all very excited and I wanted to keep you guys in the loop as well um, on why and uh <laughs> and what to look forward to as well as usual there'll be a big update that's a little bit more coherent than this very rambly update at the end of my busy work day um in my night sky news video next thursday i think that's coming out as well so look out for that and also there'll probably be a, you know, a few more updates people have digested what's been going on i imagine there's even going to be some papers that are published very quickly that are put on the astronomy archive probably with some science on this image like oh the galaxies in the background or something like that i bet there'll be something more to talk about by next week already and you know okay I mean, can you tell i'm excited <laughs> you can probably tell thanks for joining on the excitement with me guys and um i'll see you very soon bye